Hey guys and welcome to another video. If you're a Tesla owner you will be sure by now to have been impressed with how good the user interface is. I mean it has a pretty good navigation, the stereo is pretty epic and the multimedia offer is by far the best out there. But it begs the question, can it be better? Do you want more choice? Maybe Google Maps or Waze? Maybe a better integration with your smartphone? Maybe you want access to more charging apps? Maybe the car you had previously had a good interaction like CarPlay. So what if you could have all of that? What if you could run Tesla OS and CarPlay at the same time? Say Tesla CarPlay. Well, you can. Today, I want to demonstrate to you how you can achieve this in an effortless, slick and user-friendly way which anyone can install. Join me today where I shall unbox, install and show you how to use the EV based Tesla CarPlay kit and stay tuned to the end as we'll be giving away this very device to a lucky winner. Before we do begin, I just want to say a big thank you to EV Base for sending me this kit to review. Let's get started. Inside the box comes the device itself, instruction manual and a USB-C power data cable. So one of the first things you'll notice is just how small this device is. With enough space for a power indicator, on and off button and obviously a Type-C connector port and a micro USB expansion port. The installation guide comes in English and is supported with these large visuals which look relatively easy to follow. Let's get on to the size and weight of the device. So the width is looking at 2.5 inches wide by 3.5 inches tall with a depth of half an inch. And in terms of weight, a staggeringly tiny 57 grams which is about the weight of two slices of bread. And lastly, just to give you some reference, Here's the size of a credit card, a conventional wired mouse for a computer, and a can of pop. So with ample storage in the Tesla Model 3 or Model Y, there should be no problems trying to find a place to hide this. So without further ado, let's install the kit. Hey guys, so you join me in the Tesla Model 3, and in front of me we've got the wireless CarPlay for Tesla which we will be installing on my Model 3 today. Now just very quickly, I want to uh, show you the device again. I know we've just been through that in the unboxing, but you can see it's a very compact device. I mean, it's tiny, it weighs absolutely nothing. And hopefully once we've got it installed and everything's working perfectly well, it's gonna be very easy to store away in the car. So next thing to do this, grab the instructions and get those ready. And we're gonna turn these over to this side. And there we have the English instructions for the device, which is a few pages, but they're mostly visual instructions. So it's they're nice and big and easy to follow. So anyway, let's get the installation started. We've got our device here. And the first instruction is to connect the device to the car using the USB-C data cable. Now in this particular Model 3, because this is a um, facelifted Model 3, we've got no USB-A ports, and we do actually get two cables with the device. So we have got USB-A to C, and we've also got C to C as well. So we're gonna use the C to C. And I've noticed that the cable is actually quite a lot longer for the A to C, which makes sense because they are locate the ports located underneath here and at the top. So you need a bit of space for it. So anyway, so let's plug the device in. So we've got USB-C in one end. We're gonna open up the storage compartment here and we're plugging it in here where the USB-C ports are. Okay, so we have the device plugged in, and as you can see down here, it's 
there's a blinking light which means we've got power to the device so the next thing we need to do is just to make sure that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are switched on on my phone so Wi-Fi is switched on and Bluetooth is also switched on and we're also going to switch on personal hotspot as well so the next thing we're going to do is actually connect the phone to the device itself so we're going to go into Bluetooth and then we've got at the bottom here Smartbox 9462 and we're going to pair that to the car and we get a Bluetooth pairing request and we're going to pair that we're going to allow it to sync with my favourites and contacts and then it's going to prompt us to use CarPlay with the Smartbox there we go and we're going to use CarPlay right so now that's done I'm going to pop my phone down there on the charger and then we could prompt it to go to the main screen of the car so now by going into the car dashboard and go into controls we're going to select the Wi-Fi symbol and look for the device in the Wi-Fi list and once connected we also need to go into Bluetooth and make sure we're connected to your mobile handset which you should be anyway if you use your phone as a key for your Tesla once you confirm this, head over to the cars and open up the web browser. And in the web address, we need to type in the following tslbox.cn and hit return. This web address will now display your CarPlay, which is being transmitted from the wireless device through your Wi-Fi. So we're going to leave it there. We're going to revisit this when we jump in the car later and actually test one of the navigational apps on our journey it's only a short journey but a much bigger journey uh, tomorrow so we will do some more testing with the device then but so far so good it's connected really well it's the latency is pretty good as you can see now it's fairly snappy but yeah so far so good So we're back in the Tesla. We're going to see if the device connects for us. If you remember, I've got it plugged in down here. There we go. Let's see what the car does. So I'm just going to get my own phone out just to check that it's connecting on the Bluetooth, which it is. And then we're going to go to the web browser. Now something I did overlook and I didn't really think about it or consider it when I jumped in the car is naturally this car is connected to my house Wi-Fi. So instead of the car connecting to the, the, the new wireless device, it was connected to the house. And this was easy to sort out. We just need to go back into Wi-Fi settings and select the device instead of the house Wi-Fi. Also to note, when you are connected to it in, in the Wi-Fi, make sure you check the box that says remain connected in drive and this will make sure that the connection between the wireless device and the car is never disrupted so now we're all successfully connected and we can see carplay let's jump in the car and we're going to first of all go on a trip and use the navigational app Waze so how did we get on with Waze? well it worked effortlessly well there was no latency issue whatsoever and it picked up all the quirks you get with Waze, like cars in the hard shoulder and confirming their locations. Watch out, vehicle on shoulder ahead. And all the little snappy little icons you get which interact with you throughout your journey and using the app. Directions and all the voice commands work perfectly well through the Tesla stereo. And all the native systems like blind spot, camera angles, work over the top of the UI so you're not obscured by anything. So now we're going to use an alternative navigational app, this time Google Maps. And again, just like Waze, it works effortlessly well. All the directions and voice commands are nice and clear and labelled on the screen and it doesn't interrupt the Tesla UI whatsoever. And what's really nice is because you do have the Tesla UI down the right hand side, they complement each other very very well. So and there we go, we've done our first trip using CarPlay and we used half the trip using Waze and half of it using Google Maps. I was really pleased with it, works really really well. 
And what's really nice about the CarPlay kit is it doesn't seem to be laggy or buggy with 100% uptime the whole time we were using it. So we're going to jump back into the Tesla now and we're going to see how long it takes for the CarPlay kit and the Tesla to connect together. Jump in the Tesla Model 3 and we're going to test to see if CarPlay is working. So we're on the basic dashboard screen, main screen here. As you can see on my phone, I've got a connection to the CarPlay receiver, which is here. And providing it's connected to the car from my phone, which we can see it is, we should be able to go up to Wi-Fi and we can see that the smart box is also connected. So let's try opening up the web browser to see if it's working. And then if we go to favorites, and there we go, we've got CarPlay connected. So we've effortlessly connected to the CarPlay and we're already ready to go. Now very quickly, we've looked at Waze and Google Maps and we'll jump onto Apple Maps again in a second. But I just wanted to show you first some of the native apps to CarPlay which work really well on the device and most of these are all charging apps there's also text messaging, phone calls, that sort of thing but let's focus on the charging apps first and what's really nice with these native apps is you can connect to the actual charging providers and this is great because we get to see the cost of the charging units the speeds and the availability because we're using the native apps and some of the other benefits of using CarPlay, if you use an app such as Electroverse, you can search for chargers which are linked to your domestic energy tariff and be billed direct to there. And another great thing about CarPlay is you do have access to other third party apps like Just Park and you can navigate straight to the best parking spaces. And if you like to make calls and book meetings in the car, you've obviously got access to your contacts just like you do on your phone and that includes things like calendar as well I mean we could literally spend all day going through these apps but let's jump back into the navigation and look at Apple Maps now I am a fan of Apple so I am in the Apple ecosystem I tend to use Apple Maps quite a lot and as you can tell from the example here it works effortlessly well just like Waze and Google Maps even the speed cameras are captured on here which is great that's something Tesla doesn't do and it's not too long before I'm at the end of my journey. So here's another question. What happens when you leave the car and you have Apple CarPlay running and return to the vehicle? Check this out. It's literally started as we left off so it's ready to go as soon as you get in the car so for the final test we're going to jump back into the carplay and we're going to use ways to navigate back home one of the things i love about ways is how intuitive it is and the little quirky icons and the little notices you get popping up asking you to confirm whether certain incidents or roadworks are still continuing, which is great for the collective and making sure we're all on time and can prepare for potential delays or closures. So the last couple of questions are really, because this device is third party and you're connected wirelessly, does it lose its connection? And when it does lose connection, what happens to the car? Let's begin with the first question. Now in the whole two weeks I've been using this device not once has it dropped its connection but as this device uses your mobile data connection if you have a poor signal you may get some slower loading speeds but on the whole it's very rare that this happens and even if you do get slower internet the maps for example still work and finally on to the second question what happens if you lose your data signal well let me explain and show you it here Right, so what we're going to do is actually cut the mobile data signal from my phone to the device. Um, so we're just going to jump into my hotspot settings and then just kill the connection at the top here. And despite not being connected to the internet, the actual CarPlay still works. We're going to click on Apple Maps and see how it behaves when we load it up. And as you can see here, even though we've got a French location selected, it's struggling to load up. So we're gonna pick somewhere a bit more localized, in this case, London, and as you can see, still won't load up, but it does show you the map. 
So it does work, but it just won't find that new location. Now let's activate the mobile data signal and see what happens. And straight away, it, as it connects, it's back up and running again. So what's my final conclusion? Well, as I stated at the beginning of the video, the Tesla OS is absolutely brilliant. It does everything extremely well. So that leaves the question, do you really need anything else? But if you do, this kit is sure to give you everything you might be looking for. With all the access to third party apps and even items which the Tesla OS does have shortfalls with, this kit will definitely solve that issue for you. One thing I can assure you of is just how good this kit is at running with the Tesla OS. With 100% uptime and pretty much zero latency issues, this kit really works well. Now this is an 100% honest review and I'm not paid to make this video. This is all my honest opinions, whether I liked it or not. And I do seriously recommend the unit. Now if you are interested in this unit and you want to be in the chance to win it, please see the description. If you're interested in the device and want to order one, head over to the website for EV Base in the description below and use my promotional code to get 15% off this unit. Again, a big thank you to EV Base for sending me the kit to the review. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and I shall see you again in the next one.